Jack Spade back here with you, High Noon Leatherworks, for another leather adventure. And today, part two of the rattlesnake holster project for the Bird's Head Grip Heritage 22. And it is a cross draw. If you go back to the last video, uh, we did the pattern and picked out what leather we were going to use and we did end up using three different types of leather and uh, I went ahead and used the pattern cut out the pieces of leather and dyed them so we're going to go ahead and start putting that together today so come on in and let's get started alright so I've got uh, the pattern that we made in the last video I've got that piece cut out and that is about 10 ounce 9 to 10 ounce leather it's nice and stiff uh, good thick leather then I've got this part of the pattern that I did not cut out on the last video all I did was make it off of this pattern and I left enough here so that it'll wrap around when you roll your holster. This part will wrap around. And that, what that's going to do is that's going to cover and stitch in our inlay. So I cut out my piece of uh, rattlesnake skin. That's my second piece of leather that I'm using. And then I'm using that chrome tanned probably about a six to seven ounce leather uh, this won't touch the gun so the veg tan is what's gonna the guns gonna sit in so I've got those three pieces and what this is is this is gonna stitch on top of the rattlesnake skin and that's what's gonna make my inlay which will look like so So if you fold this back around like so, this will fold back and I'm going to attach that through the back of the holster. I'll show you how I'm going to do that because I don't want a strap or anything coming around this and covering up any of the rattlesnake skin. And then I'll have stitching here. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to use uh, an off-white color stitch to match the off-white color in the rattlesnake skin. So it'll be stitched here, rolled around, and then stitched on the back here too. So we'll have a stitch around the outside, a stitch around the inside where the inlay is, and that'll also all be glued together. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to start by, I'm going to lay this second piece of black leather, the one that covers the inlay. I'm going to lay it on top, and all I'm going to do is use a small scribe, and I'm going to lightly go around the inside. where the snake skin is going to go and you should, we'll see if you can see that but I scribed a line on there yeah you can see the line so you can, I just lightly scribed a line, I didn't put it too deep or anything and what that's going to do is that's going to show me where to lay my snake skin so that when I reposition this on here it's going to make sure that it's it's covered and I get my stitching in all the way around the outside of the snake skin. So what I need to do is that's going to tell me where I need to place my contact cement. Let me 
let me get a small piece of cardboard here. And I do have my stitching holes punched on this part of the leather but not on anything else because I I'm, I think I'm gonna drill these because I'm going through so much of a thickness um, I'll use a very very small drill bit and drill those holes so I already punched these using my stitching punch so that I know exactly where to drill those holes so I'll go ahead and take my contact cement and I've already dripped a drop on the other part of the holster. I'll clean that off real quick while it's wet. So I want to be careful I don't rip that and if I get this too far outside of where the snakeskin leather is going to go it's no big deal because it's going to be covered up by the other black piece of leather and that's going to be glued on too so I'll show you how I'm going to do that also. So I'm not really concerned about going too far outside of my scribed line. I just wanted to make sure I had something to go by. So there's the black leather for the holster itself. Then I'm going to come back and put a light coat on the back of my snake skin. And if you don't want to use the brush that in, comes in the contact cement can, you don't have to. You can use a sponge or a artist brush or a sponge brush like a painting sponge with a handle whatever you want to use it's personal preference a lot of times these brushes will wear out that come in the can before you actually run out of contact cement so all right So I'll loosely put my lid back on, let these two pieces sit for just a few minutes here, just so they can get tacky. And once they start drying and getting tacky, then I can go ahead and make those two surfaces together. Um, and then I can dry fit this also to make sure that it's going to be covered but that's another reason why I put the scribe line on all right that's becoming tacky that's still kind of wet so we'll let that sit for a second I could probably go ahead and do this surface the back of this surface while I'm waiting on this to tack up I don't think that would be a problem. Let me spin this around so I have room without laying it on any wet cement. So I'm doing this so number one it's going to lay nice and flat and uh, it's going to be very secure. Number two, it'll keep it from moving at all 
while I'm drilling my stitching holes or punching stitching holes, whatever you're going to do. And it'll keep it nice and secure while I'm stitching. So it'll make it much easier for me to stitch this up. Um, whether you're using a machine or you're, <coughs> or you're doing it by hand. Um, I think I'm going to do this one by hand. And I'll use a, a saddle stitch. And I'll do that off camera because you've seen... If you've watched any of my videos, I've got a lot of those on saddle stitching, so I don't think I need to go through that. You can go back and check those out. So there's that's coated. Now let's see how we're doing on these two pieces here. That one's good. I think this one's about right. So let's very carefully want to double check this and make sure that I'm getting enough of that. rattlesnake skin in the right position and it is just a little moist yet so that I can make sure if I have to I could move it a little bit because once that you make that good contact it's not gonna want to let go all right so those two pieces are mated together. Double check, put a little piece of scrap leather on top of that so I don't mar up or put marks on my snake skin. And I have good solid contact with those two pieces that's not gonna go anywhere so now remember I coated the back of this one it's ready so all I have to do is coat the front of this I don't want to get too close and mess up and get that all over the snake skin so What I'm going to try to do, since I only have one surface of this coated, is I'm going to lay this down, get it lined up where I want it. And then I'm going to do the same idea, lightly scribe a line on the outside. And that'll show me where I need to stay inside with my contact cement. So I need to stay inside that line. So I'm, I'm trying to stay about a sixteenth of an inch or so away from that line. Then I can go back and drag that away from that edge. And then I can go ahead and bring it all the way up. To the edge and just a hair 
over onto the snake skin. It's not going to hurt anything. I've got plenty of overlap there. But I do want it just barely over the edge of the snake skin. And I'll work that around to this side. I can go all the way out to the edge on the outside. And then again, right up just barely over the edge of the snake skin part of the leather. Same way at the bottom. I can go all the way to the edge. So you just want to be really careful as you're working that glue to not get any over into the area that's going to show. Through your second piece. We'll let that sit for a couple of minutes and we'll let that tack up and then we'll put this piece over the top of that. Snake skin seems to be nice and flat. It adhered really well to the holster piece of leather. Make sure I don't have any debris or anything, picked up any dirt off of that cardboard. I'll wipe that off. This piece is nice and dry. I can go ahead and lay this on here and get it lined up while this is still a little moist. It's starting to tack up. I could double check all my edges and what that allows me to do is if it's still just a little moist I can slide that around just a little bit if I need to before I press that down into position. So I've got it lined up where I want it. I'll do the same thing as I did on the snake skin. Put my nice clean piece of scrap leather over the top of it so I don't mar this up. that's going to do is that's going to ensure my adhesion between those two pieces. I'll check out the edge again and there is going to be a little bit of uh, cleanup. I haven't done any uh, burnishing or anything to any of the edges because I want to do it all together in the end. Uh, but I did uh, bevel the edge of the front piece not the back because I want it to be nice and flat so I'll let that sit for a second let that really get nice and adhered and with that contact cement and being that flat and flattening that out pushing those together with that hammer and that piece of leather it's going to be nice and tight together so there's where we're at I've got my inlay in I've got my top piece of leather that creates the outline for the inlay and if you take the back side and you roll that around You can 
start to see how that's going to look. Now, I need to let this sit real good and let that dry. Because if I don't let that dry real good and start bending on that, it's going to want to come loose just because of the the tension and I'll need to stitch this edge before I stitch these two together so I'll, I'll stitch this edge first then I'll come back and fold it and then stitch all this together now what I want to do is I want to attach this back piece I want to attach it to here before I stitch this together because I don't want to use a uh, strap or anything around it once I'm done because I don't want to cover up any of my uh, rattlesnake skin. I thought about putting a strap around it but uh, then I was like no don't want to do that. So before I can put this, if you take a look at where that falls, it's going to fall. I'll probably attach it together somewhere in here with a couple of rivets. And where that's going to fall is right over that stitch line. So I'm going to have to do this after I make this first stitch across here. So. Uh, since this is only really two thicknesses of leather, I can go ahead and punch through that with an awl now that I have my stitching holes in here that are so those I used a stitching punch so those are the exact same width apart. So I can take my awl which has a bigger tip and come back through and put those holes in here down this edge and go ahead and stitch that edge so I can go ahead and fold this over and put my holes in and my rivets. So I'm going to go ahead and punch the holes all the way through both pieces of leather. I'm going to stitch that with my uh, off-white sinew and then I'll be back all right so I've got this stitched down through here I just went around the corner and around this corner so I can pull this back and affix it because if I don't then when I roll this over to stitch my last stitch over here then it's uh, it's not I'm not going to be able to do that I won't be able to get to it so I want to do that now so I'll fold this back and again I'm going to use a couple of rivets so I need to make sure that I line these up good so that my remember this is a cross draw so it's at a a little bit of a cant about a half inch so I'm going to take my punch I'll put a piece of scrap leather behind here so I don't drive into my cutting self-healing cutting mat I'm going to line that up and then I'll put a couple of holes back here. I'm, I want to leave plenty of room for a wide belt if I ever wear this on a wide belt. So let's double check. The measurement is going to be four inches. That's plenty. I never make a belt more than three. So that's plenty of room. I can go ahead and put my first punch in. 
and I'll leave that there so it doesn't move and then I'll come over and take another single punch and put my second hole while well, that's still in there so it doesn't move anywhere So I can take that one out, take my second one out, put that second one in the first hole, it's smaller, and then I can mark it with the first punch or that all, and you can see where my holes are now on both pieces. So now I can take my punch that I use for my rivets right on those I can go ahead and get my flatten those out a little bit. I can get my rivet hardware. I'll get let me see which set I want here, whether I want the five sixteenths or the three sixteenths. like the 5 sixteenths is going to work the best. Now, what I need to do before I set those rivets in, there's a cap, another 5 sixteenths and another cap, my setter, and my anvil. Before I set those in there, I want to make sure that I'm going to be able to stitch this up over here because when I fold that over, I'm going to be stitching this and it looks like it will give me enough room that I can go through here with a needle and pull it out the side. So I, I've done this where I've made enough mistakes. Uh, I've done that, prematurely put in rivets or stitches and then find out that I couldn't get uh, my other holes in there or, you know, depending on the project. Uh, so I have to take it out and redo it. So I try to look at that several times before I go ahead and move on to the next step like the rivets. There's one. Here's the second one. Make sure I get my anvil on there correctly. Get my cap on and then set my rivet. All right, so there's my rivets are set here. There's the inside, that's the outside. Now, I can go ahead and slide a belt in there. And this piece is two and a half inches. That's pretty wide. But you can see a belt will slide in there very easy. A two and a half. And it'll go up to a three, three and a half inch belt easy. So double check that that's going to work just fine now the next thing i want to do 
is I want to go ahead and stitch this inside stitch all the way around. That's going to tie this uh, overlay piece of leather to the inlaid piece of rattlesnake skin. So I've got my marks around here that I used my stitching punch on. So now I'll get my sinew and my needle or needles and I'll go ahead and I'll do a saddle stitch all the way around here and then I'll come back. I finished that stitching around the inside so that goes through the top layer the actual rattlesnake skin and then it goes through the back layer so that has been stitched up this side that turns the corner has been stitched up and that's really stiffening everything up which is going to be really nice um, now I'm going to terminate this and I'll just cut my synthetic sinew off, take my lighter, my mallet, melt the two ends, flatten that out, and that's terminated. That'll be on the inside and never see it. So the only thing really that I have left is I've got to stitch this outside piece. Now this up at the top and this at the bottom is just to keep those two outside piece or the inside and the outside piece together and for looks more than anything. Uh, but it will keep those two pieces stitched together. Then when I get down to here on this corner I need to go through this back side too. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clean these stitching holes up real quick so I can see exactly where they're at. And all I'm going to do is just barely roll that stitching punch in those holes again just to clean them up a little bit so I can see. I was going to drill this, but I think I want to keep the stitching real nice and tight. So I don't think I'm going to drill it. I'm going to try to clean these holes up really well here. And then use my awl and see if I can't punch through all three thicknesses here. So I'm going to try it. If not, I can always drill it. Let me clean the top. Already cleaned the bottom up a little bit. Again, I'm just barely tapping that and rolling that in the same holes that I punched in there before. They just, from handling it, from all the stitching and uh, tapping on it from the gluing those holes, those small stitching holes want to start closing up a little bit, especially if it's got dye on it and it's not completely dry. That makes it a little soft. So let's go ahead and I'll take my stitching awl.
And again, this one's this is a sharp, rounded awl that makes a real nice, clean hole for stitching. If you don't drill, normally if I've got three or four layers, like especially for a knife sheath or something, I'll drill it. But if I don't have to drill it, I just as soon punch the holes myself. And at this point, I'm just going through two thicknesses anyway. So it's not that big a deal. So the top and bottom is only two thicknesses about a six or seven ounce and then a nine or ten ounce now I'm gonna go ahead and clean these punch these all the way through all the way down here even though I'll punch them again when I get to this other side. And I'll show you what I'm talking about as soon as I get that cleaned up. And it is a lot of work, manual work, to do a custom holster like this. But it's also very rewarding. And you have something that nobody else has. It's a one-off. And again, I'm just cleaning these up so that it goes all the way through. I have, when I did the top layer, I used the two and the four prong. So when I did the first layer, I used the uh, two and the four prong stitching punch. And then I go back with that all. Some people think that's overkill. Then I go back with that all and clean all those holes up real nice. It just makes it easier for me to stitch by hand. So there, those are all cleaned up. Now what I need to do is I need to fold this over. You can see how it's really starting to come together. And I could actually get a good idea now what that's going to look like. With the revolver in there going to be sharp. So what I need to do is fold this over and get me a hole in this top piece all the way through So that can hold that together. So that as that's held together, then I can fold this over and 
get down to where I need this bottom hole. Because I need to know where to transfer that to, and I need to know where to stop stitching on this side, where it goes all the way through everything. So I'll take my single punch here. Have that go all the way through and that's I've got my beginning hole and my ending hole so I can pull those out and I can take my grooving tool and what I'll do is I'll set that to match the front groove And I'll double check it two or three times before I, I just won't take my first measurement and assume that it's correct. And then once I get it exactly where I want it, Crank it down real good to make sure it matches the front. Now I can either do it on this side, which would probably be the best thing to do, and I can go ahead and give me a groove line. I can pull this back where I've already folded over the back and I just go from one hole to the other hole where I just transferred it from the front to the back. Now you can go ahead and hold that together and punch all those holes at the same time if you wanted to. Um, that would work too. But it's just, to me, it's a lot easier to do it this way and then transfer my holes because I've got my starting hole. So I can use my two and four prong punch again. And just work my way from that first hole down. Now I did when I used my grooving tool, I did take my die, top layer of die off. So I'll go back and touch that up once I get my holes in here. I can again I can lift this up work my holes in that go to my two prong to get around this corner back to my four prong and 
I can go back to my two prong, get around my next corner. And then I end up at the last hole where I transferred it from the other side. So those holes are punched and transferred. Now I'm ready to go ahead and finish all the stitching down this side at the bottom and the top. So I'll go ahead and touch this up with a little black dye, do all that stitching, and then I'll come back. All right, so I've got all the rest of the stitching done. This turned out really good. Down the edge, the back turned out good for the belt loop. I love the uh, rattlesnake skin on there and the stitching, that off-white stitching or tan uh, just really highlighted that. I think that turned out great. You can see how that stitching turned out. So let's see how this thing fits. Oh, it fits awesome. It's perfect. If you go back and you look at the uh, uh, first video when I did the pattern, how I made the pattern so that only half of the trigger guard would show and the bottom of the trigger, you can get the light here, there you go, where the bottom of the trigger right here would be covered. But I wanted my loading gate accessible. So it turned out perfect. My hammer is exposed. I can get my hand around the entire grip. There's nothing back here keeping that from happening or obstructing my hand from going around the grip. Nice pull. And I'll probably Put a little moisture on this. I'll leave this handgun in here for a little while and see how that ends up uh, molding to that without wet molding it. I think it'll be fine because I like it nice and stiff like that. So, uh, see, even just doing that by hand a little bit already made it much easier. So it turned out great. I love it. I've always wanted to do a rattlesnake inlay. All right, so I'm very excited about how it turned out. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this. I did it in a two-parter because uh, some people put comments about how they don't get to see the finished product. Uh, well, they got to watch the multiple parts because if I didn't, I tried to do that all in one video it'd be three hours long or something so uh, that's why I put them in parts but it turned out great I love it it's sharp it's heavy duty uh, it's got all this intricate hand stitching on it that matches the color in the rattlesnake skin it looks perfect the way it sets up at the top. Goes in and out. Great. And then it has that half inch cant that when it's on a belt, let's see if I can back up far enough. When it's on a belt, that half inch cant's going to make it a real nice cross draw. So very happy how this turned out. Again, 
I'd never done anything like that before, so I just kept at it and kept working my ideas down on paper and then transferred it over to the leather and then took my time as I was doing it. So uh, I'm very happy with it. So please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.